Okay. Okay. Right. We're going to go live now. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our fortnightly webinar. We're the Devon International Recruitment Alliance, and we deliver fortnightly webinars based on educational resources um, that are going to be helpful for your transition into Devon. Um, so my name's Carly and I'm the pastoral lead nurse and we've got lovely Laura on the call and ladies, should we do a quick whiz round? So Kat? Hi. So Kat works with a recruitment team and then we've got our leader Tracy. Good morning everybody or good afternoon wherever you are. Really nice to see you all again. And we've got the lovely Vicky. Hi everyone. So Vicky's one of our recruitment partners and we've got lovely Emily, who's another recruitment partner. Give us a wave. Hi. Hi. So please let us know in the chat where you are dialing in from. We'd like to know what parts of the globe um, you're dialing in from when you watch these webinars. We are always open to feedback. Please tell us what you might like to see if we've not already done it. Or you've not seen it on our YouTube channel. So remember to follow us on social media. Ready girls? Give us a like. Give us love and give us a share. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we are new to TikTok. So look out for TikTok videos. Um, so please pop any questions you've got in the chat. Any questions at all? We've got the recruitment team here with us um, to pick up your recruitment questions. We're going to play you a pre recorded webinar this morning um, on the visual infusion phlebitis uh, skills assessment. So this is one of the skill stations you will be assessed on as part of your OSCE training. So a lot of you have asked for some OSCE training, so we've responded to that. So this will be about the VIP score. You'll hear it called VIP. Um, this may be something new, so this will give you a really good first heads up to the assessment criteria that we use in the UK and what you will be assessed on in your OSCE. So we're going to play that and then afterwards I'm going to show you some really good uh, resources that you can access for free on practice exam papers, practice CBT papers. Um, so we'll follow with that at the end. So if we could just play the video, Laura, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> OK, ready. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Devon International Recruitment Alliance education session. Um, so we're going to talk about the visual infusion phlebitis school today, which is known as VIP. Um, so I've got the great pleasure of welcoming Dawn, Dawn Chambers. So Dawn is a sister on AMU at the Royal Devon and Exeter Hospital, and Dawn's come along to do a bite sized education session on VIP scoring, um, and this is based on one of your OSCE stations. So this will really help you when you arrive in the UK and start to have your OSCE training. You'll be one step ahead of the game. So remember to follow us on so social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and most recently TikTok. Give us a like, give us a love, and give us a share. Um, so Dawn, I'm gonna hand over to you um, to talk about visual infusion phlebitis score. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you very much, Carly, and welcome to everybody who's watching or who follows this up at a later date. As Carly said, I'm a sister on the acute medical unit, commonly in other parts of the country known as MAU. And we're going to be looking at the VIP scoring system that we use within the United Kingdom. And your OSCE will uh, contain you using the VIP score as well as uh, intravenous flush, but we're just using the VIP score. So the visual infusion phlebitis score, it's a score that we use to assess whether a cannula, and it's just a short tunnel catheter in somebody's limb needs to be removed. This is to prevent infection at the earliest possible point. It is a tool that we use on every single shift that we work. And the minimum standard is that you document and record your VIP score in your nursing notes once every shift. Okay, next slide. Obviously, you all know what phlebitis is. It's just a common 
inflammation of a vein and we are trying to prevent that happening and also the severity that can lead on if it is not identified at, an, at the earliest possible moment. These are some evidences of early stage phlebitis and as you can see they've either been measured or marked with an indelible pen so that we can see whether uh, the symptoms are getting worse or less dependent on the treatment that's taken, the actions that are taken. So obviously, I'm just gonna go through this one quite quickly. All as you're all registered nurses, you know the symptoms of phlebitis. So you're looking for some redness or and or swelling, warmth, erythema, whether it's tender, whether it's streaking along the skin or along a vein, as we saw in one of the previous pictures, or whether it feels firm, um, like a rope or um, or a cord under the skin. Um, but you would all know this from obviously your daily practice. So the score is based on a zero to five in ascending order, depending on the severity and the score is also colour coded from green to red. This also gives you a clue as to what you should be doing. So it identifies a number, a description, and what your action should be. And the next slide will show you that. So as you can see, zero green, the site appears healthy, there's no sign of phlebitis, you're just going to observe it. One, some um, swelling or pain or redness, possible signs of levitis, just observe. Remember, along all these, you are going to be documenting in your notes. A VIP score of two, they're going to have two of the, of the uh, issues, either pain, erythema or swelling. And the advice there is to recite the cannula. Three, all of the issues are present and it's a medium stage of phlebitis and we need to start thinking about considering treatment. You know, is this phlebitis severe enough that we're going to warrant antibiotics and we're going to recite the cannula and we're going to document it. Stage four, pain along the path of the cannula, erythema, swelling and you have got that palpable venous cord. Now this is more an advanced stage of phlebitis and you're going to recite the cannula and again consider treatment. And stage five is the most severe, it's the advanced stage of phlebitis and we are going to initiate treatment after discussion with our medical colleagues. The cannula is going to be recited, you may have to have phot photographs taken, you may have to consider incident reporting as well as your documentation. So your assessment, you're going to assess the site before and after each use. So please do consider, does this cannula need to be in place? It has become common practice for an all new admissions to get a cannula. So aside from the fact that you're inter introducing a foreign object into a person's body, you're also introducing the risk of infection. So when you come on shift, does this patient need a cannula? Yes, it does because they are having IV fluids, IV antibiotics. So before you use it for the first time, have a look at the site. Is the dressing dry? Is it clean? Is there any sign of phlebitis? looking at your 0 to 5 score. Make sure that you record the score, however long your shift, at least once in your nursing notes. You, the cannula should be recited every 72 hours. And I put a little star there because, and I'll explain why on the next site. And we use semi-permeable dressings within the United Kingdom so that you can easily observe the site. Now, then, when I investigated and researched this in full, although I use the 0 to 5 VIP scoring every day, it says that the cannula dressing should be changed every seven days. 
And I think on reflection, that is probably for your tunneled lines, your pick lines, your mid lines, because we've already said that cannulas should be replaced routinely every 72 hours. There are, as always, some patients who are outside that criteria. Maybe they have the most difficult veins to cannulate and you can afford to keep it in an extra 24 hours. You must remove the dressing if it becomes moist, blood stained, because um, this is a route for infection to enter the skin. And as I said at the beginning, please consider removing the cannula. Now, I'm a, I'm a sister, so I don't wait for a doctor to tell me. If I'm not using a cannula in a 12 hour shift, I remove it. If you're unsure, seek medical advice. So what do you do if you have to remove the cannula? Well, obviously follow the action on your 0 to 5 chart. Apply any first aid, basic first aid, treat, first aid treatment. Does it need rest? Does it need ice? Does it need compression? Does it need elevation? Is the phlebitis so severe that you are now having an oozing wound? So do you need to swab it and send it off for microscopy? culture and sen sensitivity and do you need medical photography? Inform the doctor. Document it in your notes and if the site is so severe, if you have gone from a VIP score zero to five within a few hours, consider incident reporting because we need to consider what has made this cannula become so infected so quickly. And then throughout your shift, regular reassessment of the site. Don't just consider that you've done everything by first aid informing the doctor. Check and ensure that the site is not worsening throughout your period of shift and ensure that you hand it over to your colleagues on the next shift. The OSCE around VIP scoring and IV flush, there is a very useful YouTube video that you can follow up this presentation with, which is documented here. Obviously, this is pre recorded, so if you. Is that all right? Yeah, thank you. Um, oh, nervous. First one. We're, yeah, we're still recording. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's OK. Um, that's really good and really informative bite sized session on VIP scoring. Um, most of our nurses that come across to Devon, they won't have heard of VIP scoring, so they'll be able to just get an introduction to that now before they arrive, um, which is really fantastic. Um, and obviously they will have the three week OSCE training programme. But as you were talking through that PowerPoint, I was just thinking and in my personal sort of clinical experience, um, the patient will always complain of pain before you see any other redness or swelling. Would you agree with that? I would totally agree with that. And often it can be just from the initial insertion. Yeah. And so you may think they're in pain because you've inserted or the doctor has inserted a cannula. But actually, if it, you know, if it becomes pa so painful that they're complaining every time you go to the bedside, then that is your first red flag. Yeah, absolutely. And with the VIP scoring, um, the, the tool there, that's 0 to 5, that they will be using that tool in the OSCE exam, won't they? Yes, they will. That's exactly the tool that they will be using within the OSCE and what we use within the NHS nationally. Great. So um, another first sight of assessment tools that we use in the UK. Um, now, I think Laura's just going to play the VIP OSCE um, exam station from the link just to give them an idea. Thank you, Laura. Oh, you're on mute. I think our recognition of infected VIPs is a lot better than it used to be. Um, you know, the introduction of the VIP scoring is probably only in the last, would you say, eight or nine years? Yes, I would. And, you know, I have had some incidences where patients have had severe infections, either MRSA, MSSA. Um, and actually, are going back 
often it's a case of the patient has actually got the uh, dressing wet in the shower, yes. felt that they, oh, it's going to come out, I'm going to fiddle with it. It's not normally down to poor practice. Yeah, it is no. normally down to the patient interfering unknowingly. Yeah, of course. Right, um, let's watch the video. In this station, you only have to concentrate on performing your skill. You've already gone to the patient and explained everything to the patient, and you've checked the privacy, the identity, the safety of the scene. All you have to do is just go back to the patient and perform the skill. All right? Okay. Ready? Ready. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm just going to read the scenario. Ms. Hoss is Submitted the work for monitoring. She had her epithelial and suggested after growing some blood for culture and sensitivity. No added fluid and medication was given pending the blood results. The doctor has prescribed a normal sedan plus one stain. This patient is in a hospital setting. All the equipment you need is provided. Please administer the medication using the prescription below. Patient details name hospital amina MRN 1867-3546. Date of birth 11th of July 87. Allergies none. Signature Jerome David Salinger today. Drug 0.9% normal saline flash supplies the 10 mil free cold syringe, batch number 593490. Those 10 mil flash round travels times 0800 was daily. Prescriber signature JD Salinger today. It's a complete body and list prescription, so I'm happy to proceed. So, before anything else, I just have to do my initial hand eyes record some steps of WHO. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, and then my hands dry. So for starting the station, I'll just have to wear my apron. Assuming my tray has been given soap and water for the past 24 hours and also been inspected with nail wax, so I'm happy to proceed. So and now be preparing my materials. So I have here a uh, alcohol swab, which is dry inside the inlay. I also have a uh, normal saline flush, which I'm going to check with my prescription. It's 0.9% normal saline flush, at 10 mil pre cold syringe with batch number 593490. Expiration date is 04-2023. So it's dry intact inlay and no precipitate. So since I already have the materials, I will be needing and I'm happy to go to my patient. And I already have checked with the drug as well uh, with this since it's an IV flush. I already have checked it with another nurse to confirm it's the right medication or right flush. So I'm not happy to go back to my patient. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, how some my name is Will Bell. Uh, but I told you a while ago, my name is Ryan Irwell, and I'll be your nurse for today. So, what I'm going, uh, so what I told you a while ago, we will be doing a VIP flush test. That is just to make sure that your cannula is patent. Are you still right for me to proceed? Yes. All right then. So, before that, I just need to check. Uh, I just need to expose the area of your cannula. If that's fine. Okay. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just going to wear this gloves, which is from dry intact intake. Uh, box all right so i'll just be uh exposing the area all right house i can see that the the site is uh, there's slight weakness on the side do you feel any pain yes it's side? painful you do okay so i can't see any swelling uh I can see any swelling in the site. So I would say uh, I can see that the site has redness 
as well as the pain. So I would score it this too. So it does just means uh, how so that it's on the early stage of plebiotis. What are we going to do? We just need to resize the cannula. OK, OK. All right. So assessor, can you assume that the cannula, uh, the reciting the cannula has been done? All right. All right, then. So I'll now proceed with the flashing of the uh, cannula. Okay. okay. So first thing I'm going to do is to clean the port for 30 seconds, and I'm just going to dispose of the ankle waste bin. So I'll just have to unlock it. I'll clean it for 30 seconds. So it's 30 seconds, and then it dry for another 30 seconds, and I'll dispose of the clinical waste bin. So uh, how so I'll be uh, flashing now uh, the uh, your site. I'll be flashing with the uh, saline flush, okay? Okay. I'll be flashing it in a positive manner. And let me know, how so if you will feel any pain, okay? Okay. Do you feel any pain? No. Okay, that's great. I'm just going to have to finish this. All right. And then I'll just have to dispose this with the clinical to a sharp spin. I'm just going to lock it as well. All right, so how's the word with the procedure? I'll just have to recover you, okay? All right. All right, how are you feeling at the moment? I'm all right. All right, so thank you so much for your cooperation. So uh, do you have any questions for me? Nothing. Okay, and then I'll just have to document what I, uh, I'll be documenting later. So if you have any questions, just uh, let us know. Uh, we'll be uh, leaving you the call bill. So just press the orange button if you need us and me, my colleague or my colleague will be there, okay? Okay. So I'll just... After we move this and this goes to the clinical waste bin. All right, so I'll just have to document whatever we have done today. So I'll just have my signature, date, and the time. And then I have to make sure that the uh, tray will be clean and uh, ready for next use. And uh, that's it. So, how so? Uh, are you in any pain at the moment? No. Are you comfortable? Yes. All right, then. So, thank you so much for your cooperation. Do you want me to uh, open the curtain back again? Okay. Okay. Open the curtains, and I'm going to end my station with the seven steps of one engine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and let me high strike. Great. That's really good. Brilliant. OK, excellent. Yeah. So that's really good oversight of the VIP score as a bite size education session. Huge thank you to Dawn for coming along and doing some teaching. Really good. Thank Dawn. you, Dawn. Uh, thank you. Sorry uh, about the nerves. Uh, you did okay. well. And I'm sure that the nurses will find it really useful. Um, and, and just to let everybody know that's watching, we will be running more bite size education sessions. Our next one is on the early warning score system news. Um, so look out for that advert. So take care, everybody, um, and we will stop recording. Thanks. Lovely. Thank you, Laura. Great. So really informative session there on VIP scoring. I hope you found that useful. And we're just going to share some slides now on some further resources that you can access for free um, in regards to your OSCE. Um, all of these resources are free um, and, you know, form part of the NMC support materials. If we go to next slide, please. So obviously, um, when you come over, all of you would have done your computer based tests, but there are actually free resources for you to use and practice computer based tests available on the Pearson View website. Um, so I think Laura was going to post some practice papers in the chat. Um, yes, and I will after this. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So please have a look. You know, these are free to use. So have a go on some of them. See what you score like. Um, it's really good practice to go through previous exam papers when you're studying for any exam. Um, there is a there is a information booklet on CBT. So we know a lot of our nurses that are watching um, and some of our nurses following our face to face Dubai Dubai event 
are awaiting their CBT, please read the CBT information booklet, which is there. Um, and remember, this presentation will be uploaded to our Nursing in Devon YouTube channel. Um, so don't think you have to scribble these things down or take a screenshot of it if you like, save you writing anything. So we've got, there is an OSCE information booklet there. That's for the NMC. If you've not had a look at the NMC website yet, I would urge you to do so. There's a lot of resources on there. Um, there's even a handbook for the process of registering as an international registrant. OK, so have a look. Um, so there the three universities are listed there in terms of your OSCE exam. Um, now, when you get to the UK and you are booked for your OSCE exam, you will be given a login to get into these websites, Oxford Brookes University, for example, where there will be more learning resources for you. So you will be inundated with the amount of resource available. Next slide, please. So this is all on the NMC and again, free to access. So you've got previous tests of competence there for you to use. Um, you've even got the blueprint, so that will really set out um, what the standards of proficiency are for your exam. So it's a good idea to have a look. So the test blueprint blueprints are available for all the specialties of nursing. So whether you're coming to work in peds, mental health or midwifery, all of it is on the NMC website. The NMC website needs to become your new best friend if you're thinking of coming to work in Devon, all right? There is so much there for you to use. Next slide, please. So as we've talked about, Pearson View website, Laura's put the link in the chat there. Have a look, it's accessible. You don't need to book on, you don't need to make a username. Just go on, have a look and take what you need. Next slide. OK, so this just talks about the numeracy practice test. Um, so there will be 15 questions. So those of you studying for your CBT will know that. Um, and you are given 30 questions to complete 30 minutes to complete the test. Please have a look on there. Do some practice questions uh, that will really give you a good feel of the standard that they expect. None of it is there to catch you out. It's all simple drug calculations, um, but have a look because I think if anything, it will just it will just reduce your anxieties that you may have. Any exams make us nervous, but just have a little look. And next slide, please. So look at all of these resources that are available for you. OK, mock exams, information on the marking criteria. All of this will really help you to prepare for your OSCE. OK, so so much information. Please have a look in, dip in and out, take what you need. Um, and all of this is to give you first sight before you even get to the UK, you know, and then you'll be able to go into your education program um, ha having already seen what the expectation is, you will be one step ahead. Uh, now, the OSCE training programme that you will receive at our Devon hospitals is three weeks full time. Um, but just imagine, imagine how clued up you're going to be when you come along to start your OSCE training and you already know quite a lot about it, um, because we really want to get you through to that first time pass. So preparation is key. Next slide. OK, so that just sets up the resources that are available. Thanks, Laura. Um, I hope you found this session useful. So we are going to be um, we are going to be delivering further OSCE training sessions. Um, we've already recorded one on uh, the news. We've got one on sepsis. So we, although a lot of it will be heavily focused on OSCE skill stations, we've also got, got some that are really relevant for your clinical practice, like sepsis, the sepsis six, um, and things that will really help you as you start to um, come to work in our Devon clinical teams. So our next webinar will be Thursday the 7th of July. Um, now both myself and Laura are on annual leave that week, so we've handed over the webinar to um, Victoria, the recruitment manager and the team, and they're going to be doing a recruitment focus. Um, so please let us know if there's anything you'd like to see as part of that recruitment focus. Uh, we try and do one 
recruitment focused webinar a month where we talk about your journey to the UK. Um, but if you think if, if there's something you'd like to see that you've not seen before, please let us know and we will include it. Um, I hope all of you have a, have a great day and we will see you see you all soon. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.